everyone, Mayor Marathi here. Welcome to another edition of Mayor Spotlight. Uh, today is February 11th, and we have the pleasure of speaking with Sergeant Steve Morgan, who many of you know is our community outreach officer for Rocky Hill PD. And uh, we wanted to bring Steve in and um, have him uh, give you a little bit of information about uh, property crime and specifically how we're seeing this increase in um, car break-ins and vehicle break-ins and people coming into garages and so forth. So uh, given Steve's role, um, we thought it was important uh, that we have a dialogue here for you guys today. Um, and before we get started, you know, I just want to reinforce the point that really this uh, isn't unique to Rocky Hill. So what we are experiencing here, although um, it's incredibly frustrated, uh, frustrating, it's, it's, it's frightening for many of our residents. It's not unique to Rocky Hill. It is in fact happening across the state. Indeed, I think as uh, Sergeant Morgan would agree, it's something that we're seeing at the national level as well. So, um, you know, I think what's important for us to understand that we really need a multifaceted approach when we're looking at property crime nowadays because it is so rampant. And really what we can do at the local level is a bit limited um, because there are so many different things that come into play when we look at property crime. And, and you know, the purpose of today is not to talk about, you know, the various reasons why we're seeing this influx in crime, but it's more just to get a handle on what can we do here um, at the municipal level? Uh, what can we do as residents to feel a little bit safer in our homes? So I know that over the course of the past year, maybe a little bit more, uh, we have been working on sort of a three-tier approach, a three-prong approach, where we're working with our neighborhoods, um, we're working at the municipal level, and then we're also um, getting the state to intervene and give us a little bit of help. And so uh, what that might look like is maybe reviewing policies at the state level or looking for funding resources uh, to funnel into Rocky Hill specifically and other municipalities so that we can all begin to work together. Because it is going to take a partnership um, and so I want you all to understand that we are working incredibly hard uh, to make those things happen. So let me, before we speak with Sergeant Morgan, uh, let me give you a little idea about what we've been doing at the municipal level. Um, and specifically, like I mentioned, we've been meeting with a lot of neighborhoods and this, this has been going on for well over a year. And so helping to uh, facilitate neighborhood watches um, we have also implemented a lock it or lose it campaign, which we did um, over the summer of last year. Uh, we have um, implemented increased police presence. We have invested in uh, body cameras for our police department. And um, we are seeking intervention with state lawmakers uh, to, to give us a little bit of support. And so I think what we wanted to do today is recognize that while we have all of these tools uh, that we've been utilizing, there's always room for improvement, right? Um, and so there's always better. I think that's the Nike, like Nike slogan, there's always better. So I guess we want to focus on what can we be doing better at the municipal level, but also focus on what can we be doing as residents ourselves to keep ourselves safe. And so we welcome you. Thank you very much. Uh, for being here. We know how busy you are. Thank you for having me, Mayor. I appreciate it. Yeah. So I guess, you know, what we're wondering is, um, are there things really that the police are doing um, that might be different than when this first started? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the First of all, let me say that this, this is frustrating to the police department as much as it is to, to anybody who lives in town. Uh, I am a, a town resident myself, and uh, I have a vest, vested interest in the, the public safety of this town uh, as well. Um, as a police department, we have directed patrols to areas that need it most. And what I mean by that is we take the, the stats, the t statistical data that comes in from crimes that are being reported, uh, and we focus our attention on some of those areas. So. Uh, let me start off by saying that if you are a victim of one of these crimes, that you do report it to the police. Mm -hmm. A lot of these 
incidents go unreported because somebody says, oh, it was just some change that was gone through in my car or you know, nothing was taken, but my doors were open and my glove box was open. Uh, I think it's very important to, to, to tell everybody we want to know about these incidents. Even if you think it's not a big deal, we do. So call us. Don't just call us and say, hey, this happened. Just letting you know. Call us and request a police report and an incident number. So we're, we're able to better track these and we're able to better direct our resources in town. I, I do think that's really important because I know um, just even from Deputy Mayor Sharma and I receiving phone calls over the course of the past several months, it will be someone who says just that, you know, geez, I've. I've I have this footage on my ring camera. You know, I never really did anything about it. What should I do about it? Uh, so I do think it's that getting people that information that, yeah, when you see it, say something, right? Absolutely. So if, if, yeah. if something happens or even if you see suspicious activity, mm -hmm. we want to know about that too. A lot of times people say, well, somebody else will call. Mm -hmm. I saw this on my way home from work and thought it was weird mm -hmm. and don't report it. Somebody else will call. Well, be that somebody else. Be that person to pick up the phone and just say, hey, I saw this on my way home from work. Can you guys look into it? And, you know, we will send the police officer over there, yeah. Okay. And so what does that complaint process actually look like? The complaint process, when somebody sees something or, or is having a, a crime happen to them, uh, they would pick up the phone and they would call dispatch. Uh, we do ask that nobody reports crimes that are active or past tense over social media. Okay. Uh, we, we do have a social media presence. And it, it does happen where people will message our Facebook page and say, hey, this is happening to me right now. And our Facebook pages aren't monitored 24-7. Mm -hmm. So we may see that two days later, and by then it's too late. So the traditional method, pick up the phone, either 911 or our routine line. You're going to get a public safety dispatcher who will take your information from you, find out what's going on. They're going to ask you several questions, so be prepared to, at, to answer some of the questions. Don't just say, send help now we won't know what we're going to. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several questions that will be asked uh, of the caller, mm -hmm. and then a police officer will be dispatched to that to that area. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of something, you know, if there's a delayed response, what type of information should the residents be gathering? As far as a delayed response from and, and, us? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. In terms of a delayed response from a resident uh, seeing something and then maybe not reporting it right away, but then calling maybe that night or the next day, yep. what kind of information should they be Well, Lisa, we, we, we would like them to call right away. We, no. would, we wouldn't like that delayed response. But okay. uh, if for some reason you saw something, you mold it over for a day and you say, you know, I really should have called. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is as much description as possible. Mm -hmm. Did you see a license plate? Mm -hmm. Did you see what color clothes or shoes the person was wearing? Um, kind of details that just not a white sedan or a black truck, mm -hmm. uh, something a little bit more that we can go off of to, to investigate that complaint. Okay, so, so the, the, I think the critical point is that we want to respond instantly as residents. Yes. If we see something, we want to say something and, and not feel concerned about it, right? I mean, if, you're, if your instinct is telling you, geez, yes. this doesn't seem right or this doesn't feel right or I don't really recognize this vehicle or this particular person, then perhaps there is something really going on and, and nothing bad will come of you making that phone call. No, in fact, it's, it's, it's an interesting question to, 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 or a statement because a lot of times we get somewhere and somebody will say, hey, geez, I didn't want to bother you guys. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do. Mm -hmm. you, you call us and we respond. Like that's, that's what we do. So bother us. Mm -hmm. Call us. If you see something that's just not ordinary for your neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know your neighborhood. I know mine. Nobody knows our neighborhoods better than the people who live there, mm -hmm. right? So if something's out of place in your neighborhood, you're going to know it. Mm -hmm. Pick up the phone and call. We may ask, well, what is suspicious about this person? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Because let's not forget, people can be in our neighborhoods who don't live there. That's not illegal. People can be in their cars. People can be on the sidewalks. People can walk wherever they want to walk. And just because somebody is in our neighborhood who doesn't live there does not make that person suspicious. So we may ask, what is that person doing that is suspicious? Can you give us any more detail? You may be asked a couple questions by our dispatcher so we can better inform the police officer who's responding. Okay, that's great, great information, thank you. Um, and so, what, what do you think, um, I know that we did the lock it or lose it, yep. uh, but uh, what do you think uh, some of the, the key tips are for folks at home um, to keep their vehicles safe? Sure. Well, we discussed uh, the, the July council meeting, I believe I came on and, and discussed your lock it or lose it campaign. 
uh, the, the tips remain the same. Mm -hmm. the, the tips don't change. Mm -hmm. The number one tip, lock your car. The number two tip, lock your car and take your key with you, mm -hmm. right? So the majority of these stolen cars or vehicle break-ins we're seeing, and I, I think at this point, most people have seen the ring footage. It's been all over the news. It's been all over social media. Here's how it goes. Car pulls up, two, three, four people jump out of that car, run up the driveway, start pulling handles. Mm -hmm. Handles locked, what do they do? They move on to the next car. Mm -hmm. Handle opens, they jump in it, they try to start it. If it starts, they drive away. They're doing the same thing with open garages now. Yeah. We're seeing more of, of the open garage uh, type stolen car. So if you do park your car in the garage, don't leave your key in it. Mm -hmm. Take your key inside the house with you. Remove all valuables from the car. If you leave your purse inside your car, it's, the potential is there for it to be stolen. Mm -hmm. um, just because your car is locked and your key's in your house, but your purse and your wallet are sitting in plain view on the front seat, somebody can very easily look in and break the window and take your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know personally I bring in all valuables out of my car and lock them inside of my house. Park your car, if you can, in a well-lit area. Consider motion lights uh, to, to oversee where your car is parked. If your vehicle is equipped with an alarm, Make sure that alarm is armed. Therefore, it is an audible notification if somebody is to uh, break into your car. And, uh, you know, if, if obviously if you have a garage door opener, one of the things that a lot of people forget about is if you leave your car unlocked and you leave your garage door opener in there, mm -hmm. you're, there's access to your house. So uh, consider locking your car if it has a garage door opener or the Blue Link mm -hmm. uh, system or remove your garage door opener and keep it with you. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, Okay, I know that uh, I know that you know times are different, mm -hmm. right? And so back in the day, we didn't lock our cars all the time. We left our garage doors open, and our kids roamed around freely mm -hmm. for hours. Um, so I think part of it is habit, making this shift, right? Um, and part of it is um, you know recognizing that we have to make that shift mm -hmm. now. So uh, I appreciate those tips. Yep. Since, the, since we've now started to see, uh, well, not now, but over the course of several months, seeing this sort of uh, trend exploding, um, has policing changed at all in uh, your department in terms of how you're looking at these cases or how, how you may be able to solve them better? Yeah, so not only from a uh, personnel standpoint as far as where we, uh, where we direct personnel once we compile the data, but the investigative standpoint has changed as well. Uh, we are training or have trained our patrol staff in the collection of DNA evidence. Hmm. So if, uh, you know, if we can't catch the perpetrator in the act or because of um, different state laws, we can't pursue that car, uh, we will be investigating after the fact. Once that car is recovered, wherever it's recovered, we are dispatching our patrol staff mm -hmm. who are trained in DNA swabbing and they will swab the, the areas that are um, high probability that somebody left DNA behind. So um, we collect the DNA, we submit it off to the state lab, mm -hmm. and we wait for the state lab to evaluate it and, and get a hit. Okay. Um, we have, we've had some success with that already. Mm -hmm. uh, we're waiting for identification at this point for at least one suspect who, once the DNA hit comes back, we're going to have uh, 14 or 15 cases statewide wow. uh, solved because of this one DNA hit that, that we recovered. So wow. uh, we are taking different investigative approaches as well to, to possibly catch the person after the fact. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. Sure. Is there anything else you think that um, we should be focusing on uh, as residents now? I would say that the two main things are the see something and say something. If something's out of place, mm -hmm. give us a call okay. and take steps to protect your your belongings, your property. Okay. Lock your house, lock your garage, lock your cars. If you see something, call us immediately. Uh, we will we will come out to where you are and we will investigate that uh, that incident. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. I, I appreciate all of the tips. I know that the residents appreciate the tips and we'll continue to review them and, and stay on top of the stay on top of this absolutely as best as we can well thank you you're Sergeant. welcome thank you for having me hi everyone mayor murata here just to give you a brief update since our interview with sergeant morgan and some of our public safety meetings uh, i want to share with you 
some of the strategies that our police department has been implementing and some strategies that we are working toward implementing. So specifically, the first one is increased patrols. So you will be noticing that there will be additional patrols. They've started already uh, beyond what we usually have on the roads. Another thing that you'll be noticing is stepping up motor vehicle stops. So um, pursuant to CDC guidelines, uh, due to COVID-19 and pandemic conditions, the police department had rolled back some of, some of those motor vehicle stops, um, but we're now in a position where the PD feels comfortable pursuing those. And certainly um, given the increase in the property crimes, uh, it is important to increase uh, motor vehicle stops at this time because those are known to be a deterrent um, to, uh, to crime um, because of their high visibility. Uh, another thing the police department is doing um, is increasing intelligence efforts. So uh, Rocky Hill PD has joined the Hartford Intelligence Center out of um, the Hartford Police Department. And so um, they will be working closely with some of our larger municipalities to uh, collect and to share data specific to property crime. So the vehicle break-ins and the car thefts. Um, another thing that uh, is going on, so basically we have this five town collaboration and we've had a five town collaboration for uh, a number of years so that those towns are Wethersfield, Rocky Hill, Cromwell, Newington and Berlin. And so some of the areas uh, you may be familiar with by way of example are our Central Connecticut Health District. So we collaborate resources and pool resources together um, and share them for the benefit of all the communities. Well, our um, police chief has um, uh, determined that they will start a uh, auto theft task force. Um, and so that is underway. And what's going to happen is one member from each of the police departments will meet weekly to share um, and track and collect data specific to um, these motor vehicle crimes, which is going to be incredibly helpful. And then finally, I wanted to share with you um, about DNA swabbing. I know that uh, Sergeant Morgan had touched upon this. So um, basically that is the way of uh, going into the cars and processing them. So the stolen vehicles, once they've been recovered, going in and processing them for DNA, collecting those samples. And our state lab has agreed uh, to run those samples so that we can then determine, uh, does that DNA match someone who's out there committing crime? So what's really exciting about this DNA sampling is that Rocky Hill is one of only a few towns where our officers have been trained and are utilizing this type of um, strategy. So then I just wanna give you a quick idea of some of the strategies that are pending funding. Um, so they're, um, we're looking for funding at the state level and um, looking for funding at the local level to do a few things. And one of those things is starting an LPR trailer pilot program. So an LPR is a license plate reader um, and those are specialized cameras. And um, the chief is considering putting those on a trailer and moving those about town um, to help uh, narrow down uh, folks who are coming and going uh, through the neighborhoods, those vehicles. So they would track the vehicle plate information. Um, another um, strategy that is pending is a regionalized license plate uh, reader effort. So those license plate readers could uh, be at our major arteries uh, coming into town and we could perhaps share that technology because it's incredibly expensive. Um, but maybe we can share that technology with uh, surrounding towns and hopefully get some state funding for that as well. And then of course, putting more patrol on the, on the roads. And so um, adding a couple of officers in this budget that's coming up. Um, so, you know, I want to thank all of you for doing your part of locking your car doors, closing your um, garage doors, taking your valuables out of your car. Um, it really goes a long way in helping uh, deter property crime. I also, um, I want to thank the Rocky Hill PD for their perseverance and uh, their continued commitment. They have an outstanding uh, commitment to our community and uh, we want to thank them for all that they're doing 
and all of these strategies that they're implementing. And then finally, I want to uh, thank uh, State Representative Wood for introducing some uh, draft legislation uh, with respect to juvenile justice and um, consequences and uh, trying to figure out what type of programming will ultimately work here. So um, again, if you see something, say something. Remember, it is a team effort and uh, we will get through it together. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.